Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. I have a question for you, and hopefully you can let me answer. Uh, let me answer, you're good. Start out on off great. Don't edit this, Scott. I want all the mistakes in. Help me answer a question. Should you be rounding your lower back when you're trying to train for results, getting stronger, getting more muscular, but minimizing injury risk? Good question. And you will hear two opposing sides that are quite vociferous in this debate, so to speak. Also, I want to introduce you to some technical nomenclature in the field so that you know how to say these things properly in real life. I'm going to teach you a few words in Jewish. That's right, not Hebrew, Jewish. And you may call it lower back, but actually it's pronounced just like something you would do to a pie. Oh, if there's a lot of roads I could go down there, it wouldn't end well. Bake. Oi, my bake. That's how you say it. So when I say bake later, I'm not saying bake a cake. I'm saying the lower part of your body, which gets height. What is height? Uh, it's hurt. It's when you, you get injured. Yes, there's a whole world here you may not know of. If you ever unfortunately travel to Brooklyn, then you can learn to, you will already know how to speak the native tongue and you'll be welcomed with open arms. Um, we're just going to get canceled sooner or later here for this shit. In any case, first side, and these people really do think they're correct, which is totally cool. Maybe they are. Are the folks that think that rounding your back puts it into an anatomically very high risk position for posterior disc herniation? And as you can remember from basic spinal anatomy, the intervertebral discs sit here, and the nerves of the spine sit mia, and the herniation back mia. That way, really can hurt your bake. And you're doing deadlifts, and you round over, and you're like, oi, oi, and you feel some shooting pain down the leg. Oi, my legs, I'll never walk again. I know it. Because remember, the 15th rule of Judaism is you always knew shit was going to go downhill for you. It was just a matter of time. And if you worried enough, you were going to instantiate it into real life. So that's an interesting opinion and may have some validity to it. And thus, because a rounding of the back can multiply the probability of a posterior and the symptomatic disc herniation causing pain, dysfunction, etc., then this school of thought will say that you should stay in neutral spine or even a forced lordotic arch spine so that, like, look, lordosis arguably can cause anterior disc herniations where the discs shoot forward. But the anterior collateral ligament that sits in front of your spine, like, you can probably shoot a gun at it and nothing would happen to it. Your discs sure as fuck won't poke through that. And even if they did, it's all just guts in there. There's no nerve roots or anything. There's no loss of function. And a bunch of people have, uh, like you right now, probably have a ton of herniations you just don't know about because the vast majority of disc herniations are actually asymptomatic. So that kind of gels really well with like, look, just arch your back, minimizes the probability that you'll get a posterior herniation and thus a symptomatic one, though not all posterior uh, herniations by a long shot are symptomatic. But if you get some anterior ones, who gives a shit? So neutral spine or even better yet, lordosis. That's what these people will say. And let's say this is especially true with heavy axially loaded lifting, loading through the spine like squats and deadlifts. Like when shit gets heavy, you better fucking like uh, just get some fucking get some bracing going and arch up very well. There is another side, an opposite side, a dark side. This is like werewolves versus vampires, except was it Scott team Edward and team Jacob? Is that his name? Team Jacob. Team. Wow, you knew that. You're cool. The G word. <laughs> yeah. Side number two, the, you know, the, the first side is the vampire side. We'll call this the werewolf side. The werewolf side thinks this, that, oh, hey, Scott, can we get a thumbnail where it's like vampire versus werewolf? And that's like the rounding one has the arched back, one has the rounded back. In any case, I'm just going to shut the fuck up. They think that you build resiliency and strength through exposure to all positions that the human body has to offer. In their school of thought, there is no such thing as the wrong position. And they don't believe that the analysis of the evidence or theory reveals that there's anything really compelling about rounding the back from an injury probability perspective. Like, yeah, like, well, whatever, like round, arch, neutral, like it's all kind of same, same. And there's no compelling reason for us to think that one of those positions, specifically the rounded one, is uh, somehow theoretically or empirically just more likely to cause injury. And they will also say very many times that you should be rounding your back regularly in training, and that will make you stronger in that back rounded position, decreasing your probability of getting hurt in that position. Hmm. Interesting stuff. Definitely compelling stuff. So what is my assessment? 
I sound like like fucking Derek, more plates, more dates. But does he have a last name? Does anyone know what his last name is? Just kind of wanted to find out where he shops and just sort of like just yes, be in the be in the peanut butter and jelly aisle when he goes through and be like, hey, Derek, what am I to watch your videos? I bet he's tall. Ooh. I'm still straight. I'm still straight. I'm still straight. In any case, my analysis is as follows. I think that from a base perspective, from a prima facie argument, knowing not a ton of the intricacies, it does seem compelling that probabilistically a posterior herniation, which is via eh, pretty straightforward biomechanics, more likely if you round your back, is probably more likely to be symptomatic and deleterious than an anterior herniation if you sort of overarch your back. And probably herniation potential is lowest when you spread the forces evenly through the inter intervertebral discs. So neutral spine is likely best. So in really high load exercises, uh, limit, you know, 5RM or lower or 5RM or heavier squats, deadlifts, things like that. I think neutral spine is probably a good default position knowing what the current state of the evidence and conjecture is. On hip hinge movements where your targets are the hamstrings, good mornings, stiff legged deadlifts, etc. I actually think it's a good idea to go actively into lordosis. Arch your entire back, especially your lower back, as much as possible because that pre-stretches the hamstrings and allows you to have to move through a smaller range of motion in order to get an awesome stretch and the pump of your life and a huge hypertrophic yield. So it's not like a safety thing in that uh, particular example. It's more of a, we actually arch our back in order to expose the muscle more. Like one of the reasons you retract your shoulder blades for bench pressing as a bodybuilder is to keep your shoulder joints safe. But that's, again, not so compelling. What you really are doing is you're pre-stretching your pecs. Right. And so same idea here with rounding or sorry, arching the lower back. Training for muscle growth is never going to be the same. And in addition to that, however, so, so, so far I sound like, you know, one of the camp number one type of guys, oh, straight backs only, straighten up your backs, Marines, bunch of, bunch of soldiers standing in neutral spine, how they should be, God damn it. This is America. I do subscribe to a very large part of that second school of thought. I do think you should be training your back through positions of full flexion. And because I think just by a small margin, the face value probability of getting quite hurt is a, a little bit higher in a rounded back situation than it is in a neutral spine, a really arched lordotic spine. I think you should at least start training your lower back through spinal flexion and extension, dynamically training your spine um, with lighter work, sets of 10 to 30 repetitions. 30 is a lot, but like, yeah, 10 to 20 for sure, even 20 to 30 if that's your jam, in exercises like the barbell flexion row. Cable flexion row, Jefferson curl, that's like where you do the world's ugliest deadlift and just exclusively question mark style round your back. If you do those movements and you build up your strength over time, your lower back, first of all, gets super, super muscular, super, super strong, and can develop a ton of stability in a variety of movements so that not only are you practicing very stable, neutral spine, safe lifting when it's ultra heavy squats and deadlift, but all of us shift a little bit, at least outside of that best range hypothetically best range, when we are under very heavy loads or going close to failure. And then because you've been training your back through dynamic range of motion, actually loaded flexion and extension through flexion rows, barbell flexion rows, cable flexion rows, all kinds of flexion rows. Hey you, what's your name? Nope, it's flexion row now. Jefferson curls, et cetera. Once we are able to do that and we've built up a lot of movement competence, strength, and muscularity, if we just so happen to round over in the deadlift, we're not like instantly shitting a fucking intervertebral disc out of our ass and being, you know, permanently wheelchair bound for forever. We are much more likely to withstand that and not get hurt because yes, there are probably more and less injurious ways to lift weights, but also at least in a higher rep setting, working up over time to get heavier, you should be building resiliency in the very likely chance that you get off center and off balance a little bit in some of your lifts. You don't want to silo yourself into being like, okay, if my technique is perfect, everything's great. But if my technique goes a little bit, disaster strikes. You want to have some buffer zone and making your strong, making your lower back, your spinal erectors, big and strong and gnarly, 
prevents injury and the probability of you getting some kind of nasty spinal injury while doing sets of 10 to 20 to 30 in the fucking flexion row is so goddamn tiny. And if it happens, man, you kind of, you know what I'm saying? You were going to hurt your back one way or another. And on that incredibly positive note, I leave you with my best wishes, best of luck. Go out there and get a strong back for the love of God. And, uh, you know, as Jordan Peterson says, stand up straight. Why wouldn't you stand up straight? Uh, it's a terrible Jordan Peterson. I'll see you guys later. 